So the Buddha actually subdivided the mind into four more aggregates. So the first aspect is as a human being. As a human being means you check. As a human being, who are you? What are you? Huh? I ask you a very simple question. Who are you? What are you? No. Ah, you have a physical body there. Eh? That was very easy to understand, isn't it? So the form element, aggregate or rupa, first aspect is a human physical body. Then you have a consciousness trapped inside, isn't it? Correct or not? Otherwise, how can you be conscious of things? That is your mind. And the Buddha say, the aggregate of mind, you must subdivide it into four so that you can develop the understanding. And to understand this four is very easy. What can your mind do? Ah. So your mind can feel, okay? So this five aggregate of form and mind. Yeah, pardon me, yeah? my drawing very good. Okay? So here is the consciousness. Or mind. So here, there are two aspects, mundane mind and the true mind. But when your mundane mind is active, you cannot see your true mind. So the Buddha said, this is the physical body. This whole thing is the physical body. So this is what they call the rupa. The form element. So rupa is form. So in this case, it's the physical form eh, or body. So you add this together, it becomes the first aspect of five aggregate of form and mind. So this is how as a human being. So like we all can easily deduce, no need to have any understanding. Just assume you don't know anything, find out yourself. As a human being, we have a physical body. Anybody want to argue about this? Then you have a consciousness trapped inside, this is your mind. The Buddha said, to understand the mind, you must subdivide it into four things. And to understand these four aggregates is very easy. Ask yourself, what can your mind do? Huh? What can your mind do? Ah, first one is, it can think. Okay. These are not according to the sequence of the Buddha, huh? because for Sui An, the first thing, very common is thing, you think a lot, is it? So, the other one is, you can feel, understand what? So this is feeling, Vedana. This is thinking, yeah? Sankara. Then what else can your mind do? You can perceive, isn't it? You can come to know things, cognize things, isn't it? So, perception. So this one is Sanya. Yeah? Then, the last one is what? What can your mind do? It can make you conscious, isn't it? Conscious of what? Conscious of what you see, hear, smell, taste, tactile, and thought process. That's why this four thing is what the Buddha is teaching you, and they are very basic and very important. You are capable of conscious. You can become conscious. Conscious of what you see, your six and all. So this is Vinyana. So this four aggregate, yeah, four aggregates of mind, together form the first aspect of the five aggregates of form and mind. So this one clear. Eh? Clear. Okay? Apart from this, where else can you find the five aggregates? 
Where else can you find angry? The mind has only this form, Hanasana. Then how does the mind receive the external form, aggregate, through what? Ah, perception. When you perceive, you cognize, understand? like the Buddha image, the external form enters your mind. So this one, four aggregates of mind, plus the external form, that enters your mind via perception or sanya equals to five mental aggregates of form and mind. Now you understand. Because of the external form enters the mind, the four aggregate plus the external form this one is mental form. Eh? Mental form. You remember the blocker? How do you know it's a blocker? You perceive it, isn't it? You cognize it through the perception aggregate. Isn't it? That's why it's a, just an image. Externally already dependent, originating, condition arising, cause of not, not so real. Because of causes and conditions, it arises. So it's dependent, originating. Condition arising, causal phenomena, not a permanent unchanging entity. And because of that, the external form when it enter the mind is only an image. How real can it be? Externally, not so real. When you perceive it through an image, mental perception, it's even more unreal. Then why do you grasp onto it, cling onto it, hold onto it, and give meaning to it, and develop all the delusion to arise your own suffering? Then you cannot get what you want. When things don't go your way, when there is separation, because you attach, you cling, you grasp to all this fire aggregate. Every aspect of it you can put to test. That's why the grasping aggregate, the final summary of the first number two, the Buddha said, Upadana Kandas is the cause of suffering. He said, in short, he summarized. All of your grasping aggregate, born of your sakayadity, is to come. You don't believe? Go and check. Put it to that. So now you know the two aspects. Now you can check, isn't it? First aspect. You cling to the physical body, do you suffer? Huh? You worry about your body? Getting old? Getting sick and dying? Eh? Where you think this is you? Eh? That's why suffering arises when you attach and cling. And you think you're real, you exist. That's why you want to own things, you want to possess things, you want to have things. That's how you give rise to the egoic mind, the personality, the selfishness which is craving, desire, greed. Then when you cannot get what you want, you become unhappy, aversion, envy, jealousy, dislike. The evil root again. Then when you don't understand, there is doubt, there is fear, there is worry, there is anxiety. And that is psychiatry, self-delusion. The three evil roots manifest because you grasp and you cling. That's why the Buddha's problem when he left the palace, he saw the four signs. The first three is about the reality of the physical body. Then when he realized that they are all empty, not real, dependent originating, condition arising, go the way of nature. That's why he liberated, he became enlightened. At that time, he got no magic. He only had understanding, wisdom. That's why finally the physical form still dies. He still realized Parinibbana and the physical body go the way of nature. So all this is what the teaching is all about. Then when it comes to these aggregates of feeling, when you attach to feeling, do you suffer? Very easy to understand. You want good feeling, you don't want unpleasant feeling. 
So you attach to one. But feeling is dependent on his thinking. If you don't know how to understand your mind, throughout the day, you will stir your mind and develop the suffering. Where every moment of perception, there is feeling from your views, opinion, conditioning, and belief system, your habitual tendency, your like and your dislike. You understand? This is how feeling, when you grasp and cling, you suffer. That's why the Buddha said the arahan, the aggregates, are pure aggregate. Means what? At the moment of contact, it's pure feeling. It's not a craving. After feeling, what does it condition? Vedana Pachya? Tangha? Feeling, condition, craving. <laughs> Craving condition, grasping, grasping condition, becoming. That is the Paticca Samupada Anasana. Without feeling, there is no duality of like and dislike, pleasant, unpleasant, Anasana. Then no mental hindrance. The mental hindrance of sensual desire, you will, is the first two, greed and hatred. You understand? That's why the teachings are all connected and linked. So if you grasp at your feeling, you suffer, you know. You can never want pleasant feeling and reject unpleasant feeling. Why? Because the reality is, the Buddha says, whatever that happened to you, there are causes and conditions. Understand? Like when you have an injury, let's say, car accident or whatever, bleeding and all things. You say, I don't want to suffer like that. If you are deluded, that is your choice. It will happen already, you understand? Condition like that, you cannot exist because you're coming and all those things. Then now, what can you do? Either you seek cure or help, or do what you have to do, or you become miserable. Uh, why the fellow so stupid? Uh, never look at my car. Uh, red light still come. You can say all those. Analyze, justify, reason, and up. You still suffer because you attach. But if you don't attach, means what? This one is not you, understand? Not go the way of nature. That's why the Buddha said this is subject to aging, sickness, injury. Finally, you will die. And this is a reality. Not only you experience all living beings, especially human beings, they have to experience, confront in life, if they live life long enough. When they confront with the Dhamma understanding, they free. Because like the Buddha said, this body of mind is of the nature to grow old, get sick, and die. For it has not gone beyond old age, sickness, and death. That's why you chant and you don't understand what you chant. Morning chanting, Heart Sutta, Everything points towards the fire aggregate and you don't want to learn. You don't even anybody say anything. Eh? Sweeping, you say something? Oh, I didn't. All these are very basic Dhamma, very basic teaching that can be understood by all. Why you all go and learn the funny type of knowledge based on, thought based on, not relevant to life? Not teaching you the thing that you're supposed to know, understand? Or not? <laughs> you have learned science and uh, biology and other things. Uh. What do they teach you? Uh? You can be a psychiatrist, uh? or you can be what they call uh, what is the other one? Uh? Uh, your daughter study on uh, uh, psychology. You can, they can only teach you thought based on psychology, become a psychiatrist and all those things. Then go into the thought process and there's a dementia and also what they call uh, you go into depression and all those things. Then what they give you? Uh -huh, tranquilizer, let you sleep, then hormone uh, to adjust your whatever uh, deficiency. Because when you have fear, anxiety, panic attack, 
born of stress, depression, they know certain chemical imbalance happen. So they put in the chemical, it's like they give you drug, then you become dependent. But they cannot solve the problem. So learning all these signs, they can't give you the full answer. They can only work within the field of thought, within the scientific knowledge. They can be very good in that field. But when it comes to understanding yourself, self-knowledge, you need mindfulness, awareness, which they don't have. The scientists don't have. That's why they cannot probe. The Buddhist meditation, you aware, you can see your five aggregates. The moment of perception, the moment of awareness of feeling, the moment of activity and movement of Sankara before the content goes in, your views, opinion, the brain, everything, you are aware. Then when you don't act according to memory, you act according to some understanding, that understanding and wisdom is so different. But this one prompts you. You only saw Manasikara. Then you can act from here. You don't have to act from here. Deluded people got no choice. This is the only instrument they have. They don't have Dhamma. They don't have wisdom. That's why they suffer. Now you understand. Ah, ah. <laughs> so this is why the five aggregate of form and mind is so important. You go into the other aggregate also say. Whatever you perceive, you discriminate. True or not? Huh? Nice, not nice, old, beautiful, race, everything come in. Understand or not? That's why you attach to perception, you give rise to division, you create misunderstanding, suffering. Then you attach to consciousness, the Buddha says this is like a magician. Understand or not? Illusion. Not real, but you think it's very real. Well, everything that you perceive through your seeing on your hearing is so real. I just don't know. How can you say this one is unreal? How can you say you are not real? You are not real. Do you understand? But this one is the consciousness like a magician. You know what is a magician? The illusion is. He creates illusion for you to see. It's like real. I already told you, you open your eye. The whole field of vision, you created it, arise already. You are the greatest magician. But all this that you perceive through your seeing consciousness, is it real? It's just an image in the memory. How real can it be? And yet you deludedly grasp and cling and claim, Oh, my race, my countrymen, my nationality. Then, you discriminate. That's why consciousness actually is like a magician. Then feeling is like what? The analogy. Bubble and a sound. Pop gone. Pop gone. Means what? Arise and pass away. Every moment of feeling is like that. So next time you fall sick, when you have pain or severe, what they call uh, intolerable type of feeling, yeah. You silent your mind and maintain awareness and don't do anything. And you find out what happened. You find out what happened. You will get a shock of your life. Actually, nobody suffer. You yourself attach and cling to that sensation and you become miserable. Where you think it's you having the pain. Understand? You sure don't agree on yeah, You ask Dr. Jayanta. The Truma department, my niece told me, the Truma department, a, a lot of traumatic accident and uh, suffering. So when you are in that state, huh, you mean the suffering not real, not you? Unless you have awareness. Because when you have awareness, you become deeper. Because I went through before, very, very painful. Normal people cannot take it. But for me, it's nothing. Well, this is a reality. The form go through this. Then I have a consciousness trap inside. I will experience this aggregate. And that's how not. But when I experience them, do I suffer? If I don't grow up, I don't suffer. Then I realize every moment is just the awareness of it. Awareness of it. When I just aware, 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 I don't suffer. 
but when I don't develop the awareness to be with the true mind, that Monday mind, that thinking, <sighs> intolerable, complain. That's why you want to seek a kill. And this is our body's speciality, the defense system, and that's a, the nerve and all those things. It trigger off pain so that you seek solution. Understand? It's our body's defense system. Otherwise, you wouldn't know that you have problem. That's why a lot of this is actually a blessing. They say early detection. You remember the doctor always advised early detection. How can you detect? Well, a lot of people don't care. Understand? Oh, a little bit uncomfortable. I think okay lah. Cannot be heart attack lah. So you postpone, you postpone, understand? Then sometimes two eggs or so, ah yeah, no time lah. Then this later, until very pain only, go and make appointment, understand? Because this is how we procrastinate. We develop all this delusion because we don't understand the aggregate. What is thinking? Thought process. Come and go, come and go, arise and pass away. And yet you can be caught. Your views, your opinion are so strong. You can get angry and miserable away. You can argue and fight and create war away. And so on. That's why I say when you see beyond form, you got less problem. You still got issue with mental. And so on. We are each and every one of us. We have our views, our opinion our belief system, our phobia, our shortcoming, all these are within the mundane mind accumulated in your brain. That's why acting according to memory is not acting at all. We are all the rubbish are inside there. But when you have the Dharma understanding, the wisdom, then these four become pure aggregate. Pure aggregate. So this one is Arahant. Or enlighten me. Because to them, these are reality. Arise and pass away. Arise and pass away. So, feeling is the same, like bubble. Yeah. Sankara is the best. You know what is the analogy around? Huh? Ah, but then has them. Have you all peeled the banana stem before? Layer after layer you peel, you go and analyze, you go and think. Another. Finally, at the core of it, empty, understand? Nothing. That's why this is delusion. But thinking cannot solve your problem, create more problem. The more you think, the more afflicted you are. Yeah. That's why they say thinking actually is very stressful consume a lot of energy, make you mentally torment you. That's why you think and think and think until the cocoon of thought, you develop what? Depression. Depression. Yeah. Yeah. Now you understand. So, all this can be understood. So, when it comes to the aggregate of mind, the Buddha gave us very good analogy. Yeah. So this one form is like foam, you remember? Foam. You wash clothes, eh? the foam eh? looks like very solid under uh, one mess. But in reality, when the condition no more, when the wind blow away, nothing exists in the sun. So the energy that the Buddha gave is all very good, very beautiful. The best is this one, perception. What is the energy? Ah, like a mirage in the desert. Wow, you see, oisy, water. But you go there, none, understand? Because it's an image, understand? Mirage created, like real, very real, but never real. Understand? That's why we awareness, you see all this, you understand all this. Then whatever you grasp, the content of consciousness, this tree is the content. And that's not. This one is a receptacle. This one come together, it becomes the thought. So this five aggregate of form and mind is your thought. The second aspect. 
under the Paticca Samopada, Avija Pachya Sankara, Sankara Pachya Vinyanang, Vinyanang Pachya Nama Rup. That is the one, second aspect of the five aggregate of four members. But the Theravada text, most of them use the three period of time. The fourth aggregate, Nama Rupa, they say is the first aspect. Avijja means because of ignorance, understand not? So you condition Sankara, they say, is karmic activity. Karmic activity gives rise to rebirth consciousness. Rebirth consciousness gives rise to the first aspect of the five aggregate of four. I like that. Very logical, very easy to understand. But over three periods of time, he teaches you that Patisya Samupada for what? Happened only once over three periods of time. This one, every moment, every instant arises within your form and mind. This is the one that the Buddha is talking about. Avijja Pacha Sankara, because of ignorance, delusion, lack of understanding, wanting to know, wanting to experience. What you do? You go and think. And what is thinking? Thinking is memory, isn't it? Where you go there and perceive through your memory. Without memory, you cannot perceive. Accumulated knowledge. So when you do that, you are going to the brain, which is an organ, like the physics experiment, upon contact, what happened? That thought consciousness arise, understand or not? So that thought consciousness is vijnana. That's why avijja pachya sankara, sankara pachya vijnana. Then vijnana pachya namaru, the second aspect of the fire agree. It means after that you input the content, you become the fire agree of all. That is your thought. And dependent on this thought, there must be sense basis. Otherwise, it cannot arise. And because of sense basis, there must be contact. No contact, no consciousness. Understand? Huh? And because of contact, feeling arise. Feeling condition craving. Craving condition grasping. Grasping condition becoming. So the whole mass of suffering following the petition of Buddha, when you are mindful, aware. You can see the link very clearly happening within your own form and mind. That's why I say when you have mindfulness, you can know who are you, what are you, and how you function as a human being. And this is the real teaching. Not what you all learn, the theory and all those things, but never investigate, never go into it, where you don't develop the true awareness, sati. Okay? Yeah. So, we finish. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sui so got something to add. Yeah. Just to add, so when, when the second aspect of the five gates of one huh. mind is so clear now, then the conclusion uh, of the reflection becomes even clearer. Yeah. The in conclusion is the grasping onto uh, the this five aggregate created yes. by our thoughts. Yeah, yeah. That makes us suffer. Correct. Our That's why of the thought it's shape. only your sankara and the sense of content of conscience that make you miserable. Where you believe it's you, understand? You believe it's real. But this one is for the conditioned world, understand? A conditioned world has its own Dhamma, has its own law of karma, has its own duality, has its own form and mind, the human being that experience OA sickness and death. That's why the Buddhists very confused. They say everywhere like contradictory. The Buddha say Anichang Dukang Anatta. The Hasutta say no Anichang, no Dukang, no Anatta. The Buddha say birth, oh, is sickness and death, the eight religion. The Hasuta say don't have. Yet they can't understand. One is the unconditioned Dhamma, one is the conditioned Dhamma. So conditioned Dhamma, you must also develop the understanding so that you can live life. We are understanding life. If you don't understand life, you cannot live. And if you cannot live, life got no meaning. You come here to suffer for what? I every time say, you myself don't come. But you got no choice, understand? Karma force you to come. 
Actually, it didn't force you. You, through your own ignorant avijja, you create that karmic river. Understand? But as a bodhisattva, they don't come back because of delusion. They come back because there is this understanding of the vow. They arise the vow to condition the pure thought out of love and compassion for the living being. They vow to liberate the limitless living being, the first vow. And because of that, it triggers off the karmic nature to create another five degree of form and mind, but born of the pure thought, love and compassion. Understand? Not rebirth due to avijja. Rebirth due to the vow, the pure thought. Because when you already arahan, like the Buddha say, you cannot come back as a rebirth to have another segmented form and mind. Unless you know this teaching, the Bodhisattva way, you plant the seed of Bodhi, take the vow, then create the condition for the pure consciousness to take conception, where you vow to do all the four things, the four basic vows. First, out of love and compassion to liberate the limitless living. And this love and compassion is the pure thought that comes. 